Hi, uh, thanks for checking out this video, which is basically a brief guide to scanning old family photos. Um, we're not going to get too much into technical stuff, but just give some people a general idea of like what the whole process is and things they can do to better uh, scan. Uh, my name is Vincent Johnson. I am a professional photographer in Chicago. I also happen to kind of be an amateur genealogist, hence the love for old photos. Um, you can follow me on the regular socials, or you can go ahead and check out uh, my favorite thing, which is a side project of mine called Lost Americana. So Lost Americana, just about everywhere you should find it. So chances are, if you are watching this video, it is because you are like me. You have a plethora of old family photos that have been left behind or given to you, or other family members have asked you to scan in. Um, these three boxes here are just one collection from my father's side, and uh, they're something I've been working on for the course of about three years now. So if you're saying to yourself, wow, three years, uh, you know, you're really slow. No, the process can tend to take that long, especially if you're doing it right. And, you know, obviously you're not going to slug through this thing all at one time. So. Here's how I like to start off. One of the ways you could do it is you can go through all the old photos you have and kind of organize them by envelope, kind of keep things that you know that are close year to year uh, with each other, or you could just start going and scanning and go for broke. Um, you'll notice that I have the old white cotton gloves on here. Uh, I do recommend it. Uh, it's not necessarily an option, but if you are handling photos, especially negatives, it is always good to uh, at least wash your hands regularly to get that oil off of your fingers because it will mess with the uh, silver halides that are on your negatives and prints and cause them to break down even faster. So they might not be around for future generations just in case you haven't scanned them in properly or you know you want a bigger file size later on. Uh, obviously invest in uh, a bulk purchase of dust off. You are going to need it especially if you happen to be doing a lot of uh, negatives as opposed to just prints. Prints aren't quite as testy with the dust as negatives are, but either way, it's always good to have around. Once again, I don't want to get overly technical uh, on this, but I know somebody's going to have a gear question. So the scanner that I use regularly and I'm using for this is the uh, Epson Perfection V750 Pro. Uh, it's about a 10 year old flatbed scanner that does transparencies uh, and prints as well. It comes with a couple of uh, slide holder or holders for your slides and negatives of different sizes. Uh, it also has a glass plate because occasionally you will run into film strips that uh, are not kind of standard for you know the modern age uh, as you'll see a little bit later on or you saw earlier in this video. Um, I happen to use a scanning software called Silverfast. Uh, it was originally included in this, but has now been outdated, so I've had to purchase a new version. Epson does have its own scanning software that comes with the V750, uh, and you could use that just fine. One of the biggest things you want to make sure is whenever you're scanning in uh, negatives or prints is you don't want to necessarily, everybody gets uh, interested in the DPI. Um, and you know you could go huge with the DPI, but what really matters uh, with it isn't so much uh, what you're scanning in all the time. So 32, 300, or 3,200 DPI for a uh, a negative is a lot different than 3,200 DPI for a print. You'd never really want to scan a print in that large. Um, so just make sure when you're going ahead and doing it, um, you look for um, some sort of setting that shows the output setting. Uh, so that you know that you could at least make an 8x10 or an 11x14. If you look at what I was just showing there, you'll see that it was set up for a 300 DPI, at roughly an 11x14 uh, output. So, And that's generally about as big as most people are going to need it or want it. Uh, once you got that all set up, you go ahead and go through your pre-scan. This is generally how long it takes just to get a quick pre-scan in. Um, it's not exactly the fastest, but um, it goes a lot faster than when you're actually scanning. Uh, once you got them in, you'll get a good view. This example I'm showing here is some prints. Generally, uh, what I do when I'm looking at uh, prints is you, you will set up a, a certain frame. You could set up multiple frames so that you could scan them in individually, which I have found is a little bit easier. You could also just go ahead and drag an entire bracket over all the photos and then use a uh, crop and straighten function in Photoshop, although I find that that takes a little bit more time. Another thing to think about too is when you do that, uh, it creates a new 
created date for that image so it's usually a little better to keep them all with the same created date in the metadata when you're going back so if you were scanning them in one week and then maybe you got really busy that month and didn't have any time to get back to it and when you do the next month uh, you can tend to have a few images uh, especially if you're doing this over a couple months that you may have scanned in all in the same batch but now have different created dates so they can get lost in the shuffle. One of the things I brought up at the beginning of this video and it kind of relates to this too is when you have this box of images a lot of these photos end up in envelopes. Um, it's really good to just kind of go ahead and if you get the chance kind of sort them by you know when they were made or in general just keep like envelopes next to each other. Uh, it's going to help a lot in the uh, naming process later on uh, and it'll also help when you get kind of randoms um, you know down the line you'll be able to kind of figure out where they might have come from or you know where they might have fallen out of because you got to remember these have been gone through for years now people have been going through them uh, back to the scanning screen we're actually still scanning in these photos um, so these are the still the four still photos that we we're scanning in from the last and I'm trying to do this in real time too so that you know the general public and you know my family as well get an idea for how long this process takes one of the things I like to do while I'm scanning is actually go through the photos, especially when I'm scanning negatives, uh, from that set of uh, negatives that I'm scanning in. This way I kind of look to see that everything's generally from like the same set. I'll look on the back to see if there's any kind of, you know, writing or printed dates and that will help me kind of get a general idea of like when these photos were from. Um, after the scanning is done, um, if you do have negatives, I highly suggest you um, invest in some archival negative sleeves. Uh, they are going to help the longevity of these um, negatives and it's a much better place than to leave them in just the regular old uh, printed paper that they were in which probably has some form of acid or you know other kind of chemicals that might be in it that are going to kind of deteriorate those negatives over time. Um, once again, still scanning in. Uh, I think looking by this one we might be on the uh, third of the four images just to give you a general idea. Negatives typically take a little longer than prints. And so back to looking at uh, photo albums. Like I said, keep them all in. When you get them into your um, you know, file system, whatever that might be, uh, it's good to even name them. Kind of give them a name. This is a trip to Phoenix in 1957 uh, so it's good to kind of you know maybe name this roll one Phoenix 1957 August I think is what I did so this way when you're saving it the these photos will generally stay together as a naming file convention and will help you uh, if you import them into like a Lightroom or an iPhoto later on down the road uh, once again still scanning in looks like we are just at about 60 percent done to kind of give you a real idea time I think these uh, roughly three by five images were being scanned in at 900 dpi which i said gave them like an 8 an 11 by 14 print range of 300 dpi once again uh, you know don't make one of the same mistakes i did which is when you have this many photos you just kind of want to dive right in and start going through all and you just scan as much stuff in as you can and then eventually what happens is you you get this big bulk load of stuff that you have to go back through and look on the back of these envelopes and the back of photos to see if you can actually find information. Uh, you know, especially the older they are, uh, you know, stuff from like the 70s, I know who's in them. Stuff from the 60s and 50s, I can kind of recognize some of the people, what they looked like when they were younger. But once it starts going back into the 40s and 30s, um, you know, it gets a little hard for me or, you know, even, you know, older relatives that I know to kind of identify some of these people. And it's, it's a bit of a slug. So, um, you know be careful with that you just want to stick through it. it it takes a while but do as many of them as you can uh, together um, you know per envelope so that you get all those namings right uh, if we go back to our scanning process now these four prints are just about done so if you've been keeping score at home I think we're roughly at about the uh, six minute mark on these uh, and they're gonna wrap up right about now and then we're gonna go into the importing uh, section and bringing them in to actually do post-production work on them. One of the uh, most powerful softwares out there when it comes to uh, editing and cataloging 
uh, photos and images is definitely Adobe's Lightroom. So if you don't have that already and you're going to be doing a lot of this, I would look into uh, getting a copy. Uh, I know that you can definitely get a subscription based, which is $10 a month, and that gives you uh, Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, but you can also, I guess, look into buying a uh, Lightroom uh, standalone for your desktop. Uh, I believe they still sell it. I could be wrong. Um, so one of the first things we want to do here is you'll see that I'm going through the import screen uh, in Lightroom. And I've selected a bunch of photos to import uh, from the scanning folder that I was keeping in my uh, pictures folder. So it's going to take a couple of seconds here and all 12 of these photos that came from the same album, which is this Arizona trip in 1957. Uh, you'll notice that uh, if you look at some of these, they're a little sideways or vertical when they should be horizontal. So the first thing you got to do is go in. Uh, I would learn the keystroke to make sure that uh, for turning stuff from vertical to or basically rotating it clockwise. And then once you do that, you got them all set. So that's the first major hurdle. Like I said, if you have named all of these um, when you were scanning them in, which the uh, software, most of the scanning software will let you do, uh, you should be all good. After that, you'll see over here in the uh, right hand, mid right corner, I am starting to type in, in the caption info. Generally what I do is I select all of them here and I'll type in the one thing that it, everything has in common. So in this case, I am writing that uh, these were scanned from prints, uh, which is very important uh, to know sometimes whether or not these were scanned from the original negative or whether they're scanned from the prints, because occasionally you will find the negatives for a set of prints later on, so it's good to know uh, what the source media of that, that file was. Uh, after that, um, I start typing in stuff that would be like whose collection this was. So these are from my grandfather. So I, I put in his name as well, that these are from his print collection. And I also put down uh, any kind of envelope name that uh, these photos were in and what was titled on that envelope. Uh, and then in general, I will also put kind of information about the date on there if it was printed. And I make sure to do a distinction between what the printing of the images were and what the actual date of what the images might be since, you know, you gotta remember people weren't snapping photos left and right. They definitely weren't digitally tagged. So you can have a set of images that say they were printed in April, but might have Christmas photos on, if you know what I'm saying. One of the next things I like to do here is, and I go through and grab all the prints uh, that were in the envelope. And if they have uh, information written on the back of them, I will go into the edit screen and enter that into the caption info uh, as to what it was. In this case, there was a rest area slash picnic area on the side of the highway that my great grandparents had stopped at with my father and my aunt to, uh, I guess, eat on their trip to Phoenix. So, um, you know, usually I put that stuff in quotations to kind of, you know, mark that I know that it was written there. Um, same thing with this one. Uh, great little classic general store somewhere out, probably in like New Mexico, Arizona. Gotta love the 7-Up sign in the background. But go ahead, put those in quotations. You could do whatever you want, bracket, um, but just generally try to keep something. And, and think about your future generations that are going to be looking at these images, uh, you know, in a digital file and so that they know. Uh, one of the big things that I always try to do with all my photos is uh, and you'll see this in a second. When I am naming people in photos, I go by their maiden name. So my grandmother, uh, who is a Johnson, goes by her maiden name, which is Ludke. Uh, and this, you know, I mean, while she may have been married her entire life, uh, only or may, may have only been married once, and her name only changed once, you got to remember there's going to be photos in this archive of her as a child and her as an adult. And so therefore keeping, uh, you know, women, especially with their maiden name, uh, is always a great way to, you know, help your catalog and help find people in your catalog. Another cool feature in Adobe Lightroom is, uh, for naming people at least, is they have a facial recognition software uh, embedded into the program. So uh, after you do this enough, you'll see that it's actually recognizing some of the people in my family. Uh, and then it just takes a couple of seconds. It does not catch everybody. It catches random people in the background as well. So, you know, you're going to get some false positives. I think if you look really close here, it's uh, identifying one of the aunts is, uh, or my aunt is my, uh, my youngest son. So, which you're definitely going to get when you have uh, family members that have some of the same facial characteristics. 
And you'll see here you can actually go ahead and look on the original picture and it will show you who they're tagging. So if you're not quite sure from the zoomed in face who it is, you can always go here. You can also then go ahead and add in uh, faces that it may or may not have missed or remove faces, like I said, of those random people at, uh, you know, gas stations and rest areas or whatever might be in your old family vacation photos. Uh, another thing you're going to want to do then too is start keyword tagging, or at least if you're me, um, one of the things I like to do is, you know, especially going through, you know, three boxes of photos, it's going to take you a while to find those pictures from a vacation or those pictures in Arizona or that one photo of somebody at the, the old cool gas station from the 1950s. So I definitely like to tag things, rest areas, gas stations, gas pumps. Uh, I do cars. Uh, my great grandfather had a Packard, so there's actually a keyword tag in here for uh, Packard. Um, you know, so beyond just tagging people, it, it gets really helpful too. You can tag things such as uh, Christmas or Easter, Halloween, uh, birthday parties, you know, birthday cakes, uh, definitely babies. Uh, you know, some of these photos, you're going to have a rough idea of when they were from, especially if it's of a parent when they were, you know, an infant. Okay, so you know it's in with a, a year or two. Of when they were born but you can also put the keyword tag in there baby um, like I said here's one where you know you're gonna see that I put in the gas pump and gas station I also put in you know truck car vehicles um, are you really gonna search all these out do you need to put them all in uh, maybe maybe not but uh, you know like I said if you're going through a hundred photos I wouldn't bother if you have a collection like I do which spans you know the 19 20s through the early 1970s and you're close to like 2,000 photos yeah you're, you're probably going to want to start doing some of these because if you're like you really want to show Uncle Marty the cool photo of you know his brother at the gas station uh, along Route 66 the it's it's not going to be easy to just pull up and find unless you've done some really good work with this metadata Another thing to uh, take into account is a lot of these software programs give you a way to color code and rate your photos. Uh, take advantage of that. You know, rate the photos that you you know think are really good. Give them like four or five stars. Give the average ones like a three or a two. Uh, color code them so you know where you are in the process. If you haven't gone in and edited them yet, uh, you know maybe give them a green or a yellow, red for finish or green for go. Whatever you want to do, just come up with a system that you stick with and work. Uh, the other thing I like to do is if you do find out like these images are from August uh, and September of 1957, uh, there is a function where you can go ahead and change the uh, actually created date of the photo. So just go ahead, go in there and give it uh, a rough date. Uh, in this case, I chose August 31st, 1957. Um, that's it. Once you're pretty much, uh, you got all the keywords in there and you've gone ahead and rotated everything and you made them look fairly decent, uh, just go ahead and, um, you know, I have folders set up either by decade or based on kind of like, you know, births, I think is an easy one. You, you could definitely tell uh, a photo uh, of, you know, before your, your father was born or after your father was born, uh, you know, if he's not in that image uh, in general. So that's one way to kind of help you, you know, deviate between, you know, decades or years uh, is based on the birth of little ones. After that, uh, just comes down to the editing. Uh, if you wanted to do any post-production work, you know, make the image look just a little bit nicer, give it some more contrast, maybe get rid of some of those dust spots in there, uh, you know, check it out, see how it's working. You know, there's always that possibility that, uh, especially when you're scanning in a negative that it could have been just a little off kilter so it didn't scan in as crisp or as uh, sharp as it should have so maybe go back and look at it and see if you could scan it in again um, that's it i hope you enjoyed uh, this kind of brief tutorial on how to go ahead and uh, you know some tips and tricks when you're scanning in old family photos um, go ahead make comments down uh, what you think i didn't cover what you think i should have covered uh, there's always a possibility I'll go back and redo this and polish it up a little nicer than it is right now. I just wanted to put this out there and see what kind of feedback I got from other people that uh, have old family photos that are scanning stuff in and kind of interested in the process and maybe what they should and uh, shouldn't be doing. Um, like I said, you got any ideas uh, you want to pass along, something that you've found that you've been doing that uh, makes it easier? 
uh, go ahead and let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching.